Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth McCoy, your host, and I'm out here in the cold again to do another quick review. Now, this is a follow-up review for the 2024 Hyundai Kona EV. This is the refresh model. Always want to start by saying thank you very much for uh, the OEMs, in this case, Hyundai Canada, for allowing me to use this press vehicle for several days. Now, first thing I will say is I'm not going to go into an in-depth review on this episode because I've kind of already done a lot of... Uh, uh, of details in a review in the first drive episode just from about a month or so ago. So I'll put that right here and the episode number and go check it out. Watch that one. That'll give you a good sense of the overview of the vehicle. This uh, basically episode is just focusing on the ability that I've had this week to spend more time with this vehicle. Because obviously in the first drive, we just went for a day. We drove around Victoria, around South Vancouver Island area. It was a beautiful area, beautiful drive. A little bit of mixed weather, but it was still nice. And it was really great to get a sense of the vehicle. I had a couple of interviews in there as well with some Hyundai staff. So I encourage you again, watch that episode. Maybe pause this, go back and watch that one, and then come back here. And what I'm going to do is just give you my quick overall summary of the vehicle very quick and then I'm going to give you my driving thoughts and I've got some different footage from some of the different days that I've been driving this and give you a sense of what it is to really own this one for the uh, own this vehicle period. Um, it is Hyundai's best-selling um, one of their best-selling vehicles the Kona lineup and the EV has done extremely well for them so it's it only does that because it's good and I'm going to tell you why this one is even better than the other one so thank you very much for tuning in hope you enjoy this episode and let me get right into it now from the specifications on this vehicle well you know I'm going to go through it pretty quick but this is the same color actually that I drove during the first drive which is interesting <laughs> that they gave me one in fact this is one of the BC cars that we had out there just not the one there was two blue ones this is not the one that I actually drove, but it's, it's the other one. So it's, it's interesting to see that only has a few hundred kilometers on it. So it's that brand new folks. But what they've designed, you know, from a, a redesign of the Kona is very nice, refreshing, bringing it up to more modern standards, bringing it up to Hyundai's design language. There's pixelation. There's all kinds of stuff going on in here. So I'm not going to go through a lot of it. It's a nice looking car. Uh, I've had people come up and say, hey, this thing looks nice. It's a really good size, easy to maneuver in parking lots, easy to maneuver downtown or in the city, getting around, very comfortable on the highway, quiet. Listen, it is, it is, a, is it not a BMW or a Mercedes or something that are, you know, that's gonna give you a luxury type of ride, but for an economy EV, because that's basically what this is, a very economical EV, it gives you a very pleasant ride. It's fairly quiet. Again, you'll hear a little bit of noise on the road, but that's understandable just because it is that kind of vehicle, but nothing that you're going to notice really. It's a very calm, collective and cool type of vehicle. I like the design language, the front and the rear. Some people will like parts of it. Some people won't like any. I get it. That's up to you, but it's a very functional EV. And the good thing about this week is we've had some really cool temperatures. You know, today, right now, it's minus five, and that's actually feeling warm. <laughs> that's why I'm not wearing gloves right now. We've had minus 20, minus 25, minus 30 with wind chill centigrade temperatures this week. So when I picked up this car and drove it back and forth to work and did some run, my running around, I was able to drive it at those low temperatures and to get a sense of what's the worst case scenario for this vehicle. And I'll tell you all about that. Now, when I talk about specs, it's got just a single motor, front wheel drive, uh, 150 watt or 201 horsepower motor, provides 188 pound feet of torque. Listen, that's more than enough to get this going. I've been driving in eco mode all week, no problem accelerating, no problem passing anybody, no problem getting a, you know, out of a tight situation if I need to. Just remember all that power to the front wheels. It's a little easier to spin them. And now these have a brand new set of Michelin XI snows on them. They put them on the day I picked up this vehicle. So it was good because we got hammered with some snow the fall that night. Um, and it handles very well. Again, front wheel drive has some different uh, driving dynamics in slippery weather. So you need to be aware of that, but very solid. Been around for decades and decades front wheel drive. It's a proven technology, works really well. So you don't really need to run this in anything but eco mode, in my opinion, folks. It gets up to speed quite quickly in that mode. If you're running it in any other mode, you're just burning electrons for, for the sake of burning them. You don't need to. I think eco is the way to go on this. Uh, it's got a 64.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, and it's, of course, 400 volt architecture. It's not based on Hyundai or the South Korean's um, EGMP platform. This is its own platform, the ICE vehicle variant, but electrified actually has a flat floor. And that's one thing I said in my other video is Hyundai switched the 
the design of this one to be designed with electrification as the intended model. And oh yeah, we'll launch some ice fee versions of this too. So um, this has a flat floor and it's been engineered that way. So little things like that show that Hyundai is very serious about electrification and they're taking the right steps towards that. Uh, what else we got for quick specs? Uh, EPA rated range is 420 kilometers or 260 miles. As you know, I'm, able, I'm pretty confident I could get way over that in the summertime. And in the wintertime, I'm gonna tell you what I get. And that's your worst case scenario. Charging is limited at 80 kilowatts for DC fast charge for max. AC is 11 kilowatts, so that's pretty good. Up from seven, so you can charge it faster on a level two at home. 80 kilowatts being the max. So people are gonna ask me, listen, can I road trip in this car? And I'm gonna say, absolutely you can. In fact, you can road trip in any all electric vehicle out there today. They will all road trip. You just have to be cognizant of what their char maximum charging speeds are. You need to be cognizant of what type of uh, charging station you can find to charge it. You need to be cognizant of the weather conditions because when it's cold, it takes a lot longer to, to charge power. Electricity moves slower in the cold, much like we do, our blood system slows down. We, we kind of move a little sluggish. Electricity is the same way. The electrons, just the physics of electricity, folks, it moves slower. It takes So the battery gets cold and it doesn't move as fast to charge it, right? So the battery has to try to warm itself during the charging cycle. So all these things contribute to various times that you're gonna to have to spend at a charging station. So the answer to your question, uh, if you can road trip, yes. Now, they tell you it's uh, 10 to 80% in about 43 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes. That's in, in really good conditions and I would agree with that. Might even be slightly quicker in the nice warm summer. But at this time of year, you know, maybe add another 15, 20 minutes to that because the colder it gets, the colder electricity flows and the battery has to warm itself up and that all takes time. So yes, you can road trip, but you need to be aware of what that experience is going to be when you stop at charging stations and uh, charge, especially DC fast charging. Because if you're road tripping, usually you're driving from one point to the next and along the way, you'll find DC fast chargers to stop at. Unless, unless you can stop at a motel and you're staying overnight somewhere for a couple of days and you can charge at a level two or whatever. That's the kind of experience this vehicle will give you. It's a good experience. It's a solid vehicle. So it's going to do okay, but you have to be aware of that experience. It's a great vehicle to drive, and yes, absolutely you can road trip. However, Hyundai is not really targeting this vehicle for guys that wanna drive across the US all the time. This is targeted as an all-purpose, uh, economical EV, all-electric vehicle that will get you you know, uh, anywhere in, in your daily driving route, because even in the worst case scenario, when it's minus 30 out, this thing will still give you about 200 kilometers of all electric range. That doesn't sound like a lot, but I work 50 kilometers back and forth to work. There and back, it's about 52 kilometers. So in essence, I can go back and forth to work almost four times before I have to recharge this vehicle in the worst case scenario, in minus 30 degrees centigrade. That's the worst case. That's the reality of these EVs, folks. You need to look at what they can give you in a worst case scenario, and then anything better than that is perfect, right? If you can live with 200 kilometers max range in the super cold on a daily basis, or on a, on a per charge basis, let's say, then this is a great vehicle for you. And all vehicles, even my Model 3, barely pushing over 200 kilometers of range when it's minus 30 out, maybe closer to 230 to 250. And I'm light foot on that thing, folks. It's just the nature of the beast. All EV batteries lose range up to 50% when it's super cold. It's not uncommon. It's a fact, so you need to understand that. Now, what else are we missing on the specs here? Front wheel drive, as I mentioned, all kinds of stuff. It's got a, a smoother power delivery than the old Kona and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, really that's kind of in the sense of a nutshell. Again, hopefully you've watched my previous episode where I've gone through some more details there, but I just wanted to give you a sense of where Hyundai positions this vehicle. And I will talk about price point at the end of this. I'll, I'll bring it up again. But now let me just um, take you for a drive. In fact, first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna go inside and I'm gonna walk through the infotainment system because I didn't get a chance to really explore it in the last video. 
and just give you a sense of what's that because that's a little bit redesigned and I really like the UI, the user interface in this infotainment system. I think they've done a great, fantastic job. In fact, I like it better than the Ionic 5 and the 6 to tell you the truth. I wish they would incorporate this UI into those vehicles. Hey, they might, who knows? OTA can do all kinds of things. We will see, especially on the new vehicles. And um, so I'm gonna do that and then I'll take you for a drive. I've got, again, I've got some different driving uh, snippets that I'm gonna put into this uh, show to show you some different times that, that I've been driving this and give you my thoughts, including how it keeps lane control and all that stuff, just to refresh you there. But I really wanna give you a sense of, of my overall driving thoughts, especially now that I've been driving this for almost a week and I've had a really good sense to, to how does it just work for everyday use. We went to Costco yesterday. Hey, loaded up with TP and paper towels and all the necessities that we usually go to Costco for once every six, seven months for. A lot of tons of room in this car for all that stuff. No problem at all. It's deceivingly roomy for being a small car. And I think the, the reason is because they've extended the wheelbase, and they've extended that rear seat uh, room about three or four inches, and that makes a huge difference in overall volume. It's just a much more comfortable backseat experience and much more capable from a cargo carrying capacity. So let's go inside. Let me show you the infotainment system. All right, let me show you the inside. All right, so let me give you a quick video overview of the uh, infotainment system because I didn't spend a lot of time on the other uh, first initial drive video. I didn't have time. So typical South Korean fashion, again, Hyundai, Kia, Genesis, all owned by Hyundai Motor Group Corp. And um, that's the parent company. So there, you'll see a lot of similarities and designs and buttons sometimes and functionality and menus, that kind of stuff. They do do some differences, but overall, there's a lot of straight functionality, and this shares in the, a lot of the rest of the Hyundai family as well. Starting here, so we have our door armrests, controls, easy, windows, mirrors, nothing fancy going on here. To the left of the steering wheel, our brightness, turning traction control on, engaging parking brake, and opening hood. That's it. You have your left stock here for your headlights. You have your, I'm going to turn the heated steering wheel off. It's pretty warm. Then you have your central driver's binnacle display. Um, I forget what the numbers are in this, but it's a pretty good screen, 10 something or 12 inch. Again, I mentioned it on the other vehicle. Good size screen. Then you have your infotainment screen with everything else going on and your HVAC system here. I like that it has a combination of hard buttons. This is extremely, extremely useful. I wish actually Tesla would incorporate this, to be honest with you. Simple things like to turn the uh, temperature and fan speeds and wind and where the um, HVAC is coming from is such an easy task in this. Don't have to go through menus. A couple of clicks, take your eyes off the road. It becomes a muscle memory. So I love, love, love this approach. I'm not a huge fan of all software buttons for everything. And even though I drive a Model 3 and I love it, I'm used to it now. But I really wish they had done something like this. Is incorporate some buttons for some, especially HVAC. Those are crucial in this kind of weather that we get and you, you need to put it on. So you've got all your controls here. Very easy to sync, unsync, recirculate driver only. It's a setting where it'll only come out of the driver's half, save on energy. I've used that a couple of times, been very handy. Auto is like it is. So very easy to see and, and the nice display. I'm gonna turn the brightness up here, make sure it's all bright. You have your standard buttons, home, map, search. They basically all do what they say. This one is programmable. I programmed it to turn on the music, so I'm not gonna press it because XM Sirius will come on in my classical station and I don't want to get copyrighted, but that's what will happen. This is showing a home screen. I believe you can set profiles, which you can, and change the home screen. There's different cards here that you can move around and do different things with on the infotainment as well. Set up data, all kinds of things as you can see. Vehicle diagnosis, right? If I want to see what's going on, it will go in and kind of check itself. Okay, it's unable to receive data, so obviously everything's good, I guess. This hasn't been activated on any subscription programs yet because it's a press car, so that's probably why I'm not getting that. You can project your phone, you can hook up your phone, and all this kind of stuff. Your standard screen comes this. You usually get a map and some kind of radio and an EV. Again, you can change the functionality in this. Really, really nice. I'm going to go back to the driver's binnacle for just a sec. You have your ADAS controls, your um, cruise control, adaptive cruise control, lane keeping on and off button, your distance between that, and then your paging. Uh, and these are up and down for speeds and for other, um, other items. So if you want to scroll through some of these screens, you just use this round button here. So I'm on current trip. Um, this is what I've done after I've charged right now. Um, this is since the last reset, and uh, which is probably what I've done, uh, about 450 kilometers or so. 
Uh, and as you can see at 22 and a half, that's pretty good for, for being as cold as we had. It gives you a range guide here if you wanna keep that on. Even though it's right next to it, it's nice to look at. Tire pressure, if you need to dry, you have to be driving and all that kind of stuff. And then you can change the screen. So if you go to another one, okay, some of those don't have. This is just a compass screen. Nice to have a compass. Here you have your, um, if you're in your driver's mode, your uh, ADAS modes for lane keeping, then it'll show you car in front of you. It'll be green when it's active, all that kind of stuff. And then that's it. Then you're back to that. So it's really just three screens that you can scroll through. I usually leave it here after charging to calculate my range. I'm in eco mode, shows my speed, shows my recharge and power range here. The different settings for um, uh, regenerative braking are there. It's on level three, left and right paddles. If I hold the left again, I can go into I pedal, which is one pedal driving. Let me zoom in a little bit here. And uh, that's the max I have is I pedal. If I use the right paddle, then I can go back to level three, to level two, level one, and level zero, which is nothing. It's basically coasting, right? So those are your settings. I believe there's an auto mode, but I don't, I think I need two hands to get into it and I don't have two hands available. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. I typically drive it in I pedal or level two or three. I kind of been bouncing around, but the I pedal on this, as I mentioned in the other video, is extremely smooth and really, really good. So the one pedal driving works well, your, your gear indicator. Uh, you get a little bit of the pixelization here in the horn. Uh, these don't light up or anything like they do in the Onyx series. They're just there to kind of carry over the theme. But there's different buttons. Of course, you're speaking, hey, Hyundai, all that kind of stuff. That one you can program and your phone calling. This is for your changing your stations and volume up and down and mute. Press that to mute. Nice feature. Uh, you've got your stocks for your lights, pretty straightforward, and your stocks for your windshield washer, pretty straightforward, rear wiper as well. Auto, win auto wipers are okay. I think they could be better. They, there's times where they don't come on fast enough, even though if you have the setting to the fastest. So it's a bit of hit and miss. Uh, like all camera-based systems, the rain sensing stuff is a little bit hit and miss, so you just have to play with it, but they work quite fine on manual mode. Your EV start button, and I mentioned some of the buttons here. Of course, your hazards here. So infotainment, really, now you notice that this has a new look and feel to everything. So press the home button, I'm there. Press the setup button, I get into a lot of the different cars, cards or things that you can change here from vehicle settings. Uh, you can turn on or off your driver assistance modes depending on what they are. So whether it's driving convenience like Smart Cruise or whether it's um, your driving safety, you can have late for the forward safety or standard. Uh, Again, lots of things that you can change. The blind spot has been fantastic. Um, like if I'm backing up and somebody's coming down the road behind me, maybe it's four or five car lengths away and it detects it and starts beeping. And it also provides haptic feedback. It shakes the steering wheel a little bit and beeps. And, and, and the blind spots flash. So it's really telling you that somebody's coming up and <laughs> stop backing up. It's a great system, actually. I have to make it. I've turned lane safety off because I don't like it. Uh, kind of nudging the steering wheel if I get close to the lane. I'd rather have a warning than an actual, but that's what that is. You have your driving modes that you can change, different things with climate, lights. I usually like the five flashes, your doors, how you doors. If you the, This does support digital key, which is newer for them, so something that you can do when you own this vehicle and all kinds of stuff. So your basic, ve uh, oops, your basic ve uh, vehicle settings, let me go back here. Drive modes, pretty specific, right? You can change your drive modes. I've been living in an eco, no reason to take it. Lights, all that kind of stuff, it's all here. Uh, from the EV side, it's got a pretty good, in, uh, it does have battery conditioning, which I like. So you can manually activate the conditioning, or if you set a um, fast charging, or you set a charger as a destination on your nav, it will automatically activate the battery preconditioning, warming up the battery, or cooling the battery, I guess, if it's vice versa, depending on what the temperature is at to where you're going. And that's a nice feature, but to have the ability to activate it on your own is a good feature because let's say you're not going to go to a charging place anytime soon, but you want to get a little bit better range, you can activate it, let it heat the temperature via battery up um, for a few minutes, and then you get a little bit better. It's got other modes on here, utility mode if you want to use it. I have just normal. Uh, this does have the smart regeneration, as I mentioned, the auto kind of different levels of it. I'm not really a big fan of the smart regenerations. The, the Mercedes-Benz had it. I think BMW, some of them had it. I'm not really a smart, a, a fan of it because um, I, I just like to control the regen a bit myself, but there are there for people that don't want to. And then different alerts as far as a charging started. It, it actually says when you plug it in and the charging starts, it goes 
charging started, but in a nicer voice than mine, all this kind of stuff. So a pretty good screen for EV nav, pretty straightforward. You can change different settings, all that kind of stuff, a nice, decent stereo system. Hey, it's not going to blow the doors off a $10,000 stereo system, but it's got a really nice, nice, uh, um, sound to it. It's, this does have a heads up display. It does have that option. Uh, might be hard to see on this. I think I showed you when I'm driving. I think you can just see it there. If I, let me just see if I can zoom in a little bit. I think I lost it again. There it is. Just on the snow. Hard to see from the camera, but from sitting here, it's pretty easy to see. Gives you good pertinent information. You can change things in the heads up display as well. Move it around, uh, enable it, disable it, that kind of stuff. I've been actually running with it for the week. This is where you would set up user profile. So that way when you come in, it'll retain your stereo settings. It'll retain your anything that's setting here, your HVAC and stuff that is electronically controlled. Unfortunately, the seats don't have memory. So it won't retain mirror or seat settings because there is no memory function there. If it did, it would. But user profile will, will you know, you will make sure that your phone is is priority, the one that you set, and, and a lot of your favorites for different, and your driving settings as well should all be saved on here. Uh, let me refocus in. Should all be saved. So those things should all be uh, pretty good there. Um, what else can I tell you? I mean, it's got some other functions. I'm not going to show you everything because there's a ton, a ton of stuff. But it's a nice display. If I get to the map here. Could see it's got a good map. I like that it comes up with this. I like that it this. I think you can change this. Yeah, you can change this little card here to show what's nearby and this kind of stuff, and even give you a clock. Even though I have a big clock there, compass if you want. I like that thing. Give you a forecast, so it gives you a little extra info. This is pretty cool when you're driving. You can see how much you're using versus climate and drivetrain um, when you're actually moving, which is interesting for power. I was able to get this up to like three kilowatts. So the power draw on the climate, even though this does have a heat pump, can be quite significant when it's really cold, hence why your range is gonna drop, right? Batteries just don't hold, uh, the density isn't there. They lose that electricity, just can't get it out of it when it's too cold. Uh, so that's why, but this is a nice, It's a, and it's a fairly nice modern screen as you can see here. and. And, and, you know, lots of uh, pretty responsive in this kind of stuff. And you can change different scales and stuff like that. I've used it a couple times. It's a nice nav system. Uh, you can search if there's something that you want to search here. Um, if I go back to home media, again, got different media. It's got some built-in quiet calming sounds, these sounds of nature here, which is uh, pretty, if you want a zen-like experience, uh, your tracks, and then again, your setup buttons and home. So pretty, pretty nice responsive. Uh, GUI. I really like the looks of this. I like the darker look on it versus the Ionics, which have a more white. Uh, first of all, this, the, the whole screen is white with uh, uh, with a more white on, uh, on, on colored uh, giving. And it works well, but I like this look much better. It's much more easy on the eyes, to be honest with you. And then we've got some little storage here, glove box. Down below, this is cool. We're seeing this on a lot of the South Koreans. You'll see this on the EV9 and stuff as well from other brands uh, for the key and stuff. But you get the selector of if you want to just charge your device from this port or charge um, and uh, use it as a USB device, like play music or something from it. And this is just a charge. Then you have a nice 12 volt if you need that. This uh, charging mat works phenomenal. I have problems with my phone on charging mats. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It's an iPhone 14 with an Apple uh, case, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Even on my Model 3, it's a hit and miss sometimes. I don't know why. So this thing works all the time. Excellent. Here you can change your drive modes if you want. Then this is, these buttons have been well used. The seat heaters, the steering wheel. It's got two levels for the heated steering wheel. I'll tell you, on the second button, it's really, really hot. Oops, I should get this straight for you guys. Um, and and then also cooling seats, so which is a nice feature that a lot of... Uh, a lot of even more luxury models don't have cooling seats. So in this price point to, at the ultimate, to get that is a nice option. Your auto hold, so if you're not running it in iPedal, you can engage that. Auto hold, hold will come in, which means when you come to a full stop, it will hold the car until you, when you release the brake and then until you press the accelerator. So you turn that on. Your parking sensors, always have those on. And then this is your cameras. And let me bring up those cameras. Uh, press the button. Okay, let's do that. So it just came up. So these are your, your cameras. You can see we have a front view. We have a rear view camera. Good size. This is our 360. A lot of these guys are doing that now where they're digitizing and pacing the camera feeds together into a pretty fluid, nice experience here. That's really good. 
Uh, you can set up the cameras if you want to turn on the lines and this kind of beeping. Always encouraged to have everything on, especially the lines. Uh, and then I think, uh, let me just see here, I think that's set. So I don't think you can increase it. So this 360 is always on, and then it's just this uh, screen that you change. So nice cameras. I really like that. It's been making it easy to park. Now this thing's so easy to park because it's small, nimble. Uh, yet big enough to hold people and but easy to park. So I think I'm running out of time on all the infotainment stuff. I just wanted to really kind of go through, since I didn't have a time, the functionality and the controls. Everything's really nice here. We have our, of course, our lights up here, which are up top. We have our windscreen. We can open the sunroof here. This does have a nice sunroof. Let me uh, zoom out a little bit. Oops, so I can get you. There we go. And you can see that. So, you know, nice, nice views. Uh, the views out of the rear screen, there you go. I mean, uh, I, no, I'm using the phone blocking it. Uh, I've got no problem seeing it in the back if I can get my phone out of the way here from blocking it. But yeah, it's been it's been no problems. And if you look around that way, you should be able to see the visibility is uh, quite, and this is from the rear view mirror angle of what it looks like. So, so quite, quite well done. All right, so let me get to driving now and give you some more thoughts. All right, so start off with some more driving thoughts. Again, I, I could give you a summary of um, the driving experience when we did the first drive in Victoria last month in BC, but obviously only driving it for a few hours, we were really only able to get a first impression. Now, my impressions of the Hyundai products are extremely high to begin with. The quality is there, the workmanship is there, the drivability, handling, comfort, it's all there. They're really, really good vehicles. So I expected no less with this refreshed Kona. And it, it does deliver. Um, I'm driving here at uh, 65 kilometers an hour. Very quiet, don't have to raise my voice quite loud. Anything like that works quite well. Easy to handle, easy to drive. As I mentioned, it's nimble um, uh, to park, easy to park, get into places and just move around traffic. Even on some longer distance drives, uh, did, did a little bit on this. Uh, very comfortable, easy to, to use the, the um, cruise control settings, the lane keeping, and they does, it does a very good job. So from a driving perspective, you're not going to be disappointed in this vehicle. It's got very good acceleration. Again, eco mode is all you need in my opinion, and it will do the job. So what I wanted to focus a little bit more on is how, did, how has it performed over this, these really, this cold period? Because again, it's going to do nicely in the summer. These have old winter tires, so they're a bit more stickier, lose efficiency, right? The cold drops efficiency as well. You know, even driving after a couple of days, I'm still able to get around the 29 to 30 uh, kilowatt per hour per 100 kilometers, which I think is pretty good. Um, once I'm able to, it stabilizes a bit, and again, understands the driving, able to bring that down well into the, the lower 20s, the mid 20s anyway, which I, again is good for cold temperatures. So as efficient as this vehicle is, it's going to suffer from cold temperature uh, range drops. That's just the nature of the business, but it's going to do quite well and um, get you again, as I mentioned, for your daily driving. On the highway, it's quite capable with that weight of the battery pack. It's very planted, even though it's a smaller vehicle. These kind of vehicles tend to be blown around a lot, especially passing trucks or if you're in open highways with high wind scenarios, you can feel you have to fight the wind. You don't do this at all in this vehicle. It handles it really, really nice. So I do like that. Um, so that's really kind of my sense of after driving it for a week, it's just been effortless. Really haven't had to think about it get in, turn it on, and go. And it's just a very pleasant vehicle to drive. It's got a nice, comfortable seat. You can find a good driving position. The visibility is great. I can see all around. It's got the 360 cameras. It's got the front parking, rear parking cameras. So if in, in those situations where I need that extra visibility, it works really good. All the controls are laid out quite nicely, as I uh, just walked you through, which I like. So everything's got a logical purpose. I love, love, love the center console. I think it's excellent, great for, you know, for putting coffee in here, which is a priority for me, having the ability to just grab it and reach for it, uh, having the, the, the physical buttons in combination with some soft touch in the screen, I think is fantastic because the stuff that I'm going to a lot, especially this week where we've had a lot of active weather, the HVAC, it's easy to see, easy to get to. Uh, and, and functions extremely well. So I really like the layout and the ergonomics 
that the Hyundai engineers have thought about it. And, you know, you, sometimes you see in my interview from the first show where I interviewed a couple of Hyundai, especially one of the product guys. And, you know, there's a lot of thought that goes into the design of, of our of vehicles, not just the external, what you see design, but internally and how how that form really functions. And this is, is a great vehicle for that. There's a lot of vehicles that just have way too much stuff going on way too many buttons or way too many screens or whatever and I think it detracts from the vehicle I think simplicity works extremely well and this vehicle is all about that it offers a lot of stuff but in a very simple easy to understand and easy to drive platform and vehicle and I would think that that is really the strength of this new refreshed Kona EV and let me just do a quick u-turn here and then I can finish wrapping up. You know, this is so easy to do this kind of stuff. I just love, love, love it. It's got such a short turning circle here. How easy is that? Love it. So in conclusion from the driving thoughts, just want you to know, folks, I've spent a week with this, almost a week, and it's just been an effortless, fantastic vehicle to drive, even in heavy snow, even in really cold temperatures. This thing heats up quickly. The heated seats, heated steering wheels give you a lot of heat that don't chew up a lot of energy there. So you find yourself turning down the HVAC once the car warms up to a point, using less energy. You know, again, this is an early production vehicle. It's not a prototype, it's a production vehicle. No squeaks or rattles, no fit and finish issues. Everything works quite well. You know, they've even thought about heating up the front charge point uh, port because that's an issue with some of these vehicles that have charge ports in the front is that they get covered in snow or some ice buildup and it's hard to pop them over, pop them open. I keep one of those little plastic uh, kind of pry tools in the car just in case I got to pry the, uh, the, <laughs> the Tesla charging port open, but I haven't had to yet. So, uh, you know, it's a good thing, but they put a... Uh, a heating mechanism in there so when you put the rear defogger on it warms up the charge port brilliant right it's a little small thing but it's very important to people who live in cold weather climates so in conclusion absolutely a fantastic vehicle to drive really simple really easy i love it lots of functionality if you need it but just to get in and go as an everyday all-purpose vehicle they've done a fantastic job and again uh, hyundai you're just you're continuing to knock this stuff out of the park keep it going all right, just some more driving in the Kona EV here. I've activated the lane keeping and the adaptive cruise control, which gives you your, basically your level two autonomy. And you might just be able to see the HUD. I'm not sure if the HUD's showing up on this, uh, just barely there. You can see that um, it shows uh, information when it loses it, it lost it now, it doesn't have the green wheel. Sorry, I went off, off the HUD page there. And now it's back on, it's green, uh, so you can see everything clearly. Uh, nav is projected, all that kind of stuff. Sorry, I keep losing this. The HUD, I'm trying to find it again and do this at the same time. Uh, anyway, it's a good it's a good H, uh, HUD projected on the windscreen, not uh, the little plastic piece that comes up. But as you can see, <coughs> excuse me, the car is maintaining the control over the lane. Let's see how it reacts through this intersection here. Hey, okay, pretty good. A lot of the um, systems will actually drop and uh, as soon as you go through an intersection because it loses the lines. Tesla is one of the few that actually maintains it throughout even wide intersections, like four lane uh, intersections and stuff. So that's pretty good that this is only a two lane road, but it's pretty good that the Kona EV maintained it. Um, it's only asking me to grab the wheel every 30 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds or so. It's a dynamic timing by the sounds of it, I guess depends, or by the looks of it, depends on how fast you're driving. But um, as, I, as I mentioned in the uh, first drive video, when we did a little bit of this practice, it handled quite well. And here again, we have a road that has a, has a uh, defined middle uh, line system, but the right hand or the, uh, as you can see, the curbside lane uh, markings come and go, and it's still able to navigate this. So I, I think the camera's focusing on the center lane uh, as its point of reference, and then when it sees that right lane marking like here, it will uh, you know, be able to redefine it and pinpoint it even more. But it's a good system. I haven't touched the wheel for quite some time, and uh, it's running quite well. So again, this HDA systems that, uh, that the South Koreans have, I don't believe this is not HDA 2, this is HDA version 1. 
I believe, highway driver assist, uh, or it might be two, but it doesn't have the lane turns the change signals that I'm aware of, it, so it won't change the lanes. Um, but it's a good system and works quite well to, again, alleviate the stress of long distance driving. Just want to give you a quick uh, driving, uh, uh, just in the winter, this is my first morning with the uh, Co refresh Kona EV. And of course, when we drove it in Vancouver area, Victoria, sorry, um, there wasn't any snow. <laughs> there was lots of rain, there's some rain. So here I'm in snow and um, they had just put winter tires on when I picked up the car. So it's got winter tires, which is good. You know, you can feel that it's front wheel drive. There's a little bit of spin on acceleration, a tad slide if you uh, aggressively brake. But you know, one thing that EVs give you is that really well balanced uh, front to rear weight ratio. And I don't know if it's, I don't think it's 50-50 on this vehicle, but because the battery is, is low um, uh, and, and centered in the vehicle, you get that um, really good planted feeling. And it really kind of shines through in the winter time where, yes, it's some slick conditions here. Uh, we've got snow that's happened overnight. It's continuing on. The roads are packed down, a little bit of iciness under there. So people are going slow, but this thing just handles really well. Now, you gotta take it easy, right? There's lots of torque. I'm driving in eco mode. Uh, I've got, um, uh, I'm blocking the camera, so I'm triggering a lot of sensors here. <laughs> And the snow, of course, build up is uh, blocking some of the sensors, which happens on EVs, right? We don't get the engine to heat up the engine bay to melt some of these things. So that's one of the challenges in winter is some of these sensors get blocked and you get some of these warnings but um, and, and icons that light up. But the point, though, of this little segment before I get into more of the driving um, and, you know, again, I gave you a good review on the last video. But, you know, it's just really, really nice to, to drive. EVs, especially all electrics in the winter, because of that weight, the low center of gravity, the balance. Um, of course, all wheel drive is even that much better, but hey, you know, I've driven front and rear wheel drive for decades and driven in uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of winters and, um, you know, never had a problem. So these things handle quite well. You just got to know the limits of the vehicle, right? Understand the conditions you're in and all that good stuff. Uh, so anyway, I'll get back to some more driving, but I thought I'd share this segment while I'm uh, in some good snow because all right so i'm going to try uh, fast charging this in the colder temperatures so you can see it's minus five uh i'm going to navigate to a charging station which is about 24 kilometers away so i'll be able to add a bit more range so you can see i'm averaging about 26 now kilowatt hours per uh, 100 kilometers and which is pretty good in cold temps um, and I'm, you can see I've activated the destination and you see that kind of squiggly line there. If I zoom in a little bit more, oh, let me zoom in a little bit more. That's come up there where the 33% is. That means that it popped up and said preconditioning the battery started for your um, destination because I set the DC charger as a destination. So I like that it gives you this little visual cue here that uh, you can see everything. So let me get to the station and plug it in and we'll see what kind of rates we pull. I'm not expecting a whole hell of a lot, but I am gonna to try to, to get to the 350 kilowatt uh, Electrify Canada F1 if I can, or at least a 150 and see what she pulls. All right, so it was a pretty painless experience to start the charging. It just took more effort to plug the cable in because of the cold. They get a little on Riley, but charging has started, negotiated on the first time. I'm at a 350 kilowatt station or up to 350. Not going to pull anywhere near that. So let's see what we're pulling. 54 kilowatts about now, 48 to 50, which is probably about right. Um, again, with the cold temperatures, that's what it's going to pull is uh, around that. I started at a 25% or 24% state of charge. So as you can see, it's going to tell me an hour to get to 80. I'm not going to 80, but uh, let's go inside the car and see what it shows. All right, so we look in the car. It's telling me almost two hours of any time, but that's to go to 100, I believe. And I'm not going to 100. Oh yeah, it's set at 100 here, as you can see. If I bring that down to 80, there we go. It's going to readjust the time to just over an hour. It said 60 some odd minutes, so that's about right, because that's what you would do on a fast charge, is only go to about 80. So you can see it's pulling in 26%, uh, 42 kilowatt charging. Um, yeah, that's probably 43, 42, that's leveling out. It's probably the best I'm gonna get in these temps uh, as it heats up a little bit. I'll probably stick on this till it gets to about 30% or so. I don't really need to charge because I'm not that far from home, but I just wanted to see what it would pull. Uh, given the okay, I hope you enjoyed all the information that I've shared about this vehicle on this follow-up episode from the first drive one that I did. The summary is this vehicle is a fantastic vehicle. In fact, it's the best 
entry-level electric vehicle that you can buy in Canada, and I would argue in the US today. From a price point, as I mentioned before, Canadian-wise, this comes in two trims, the preferred trim, which is $46,399, and the ultimate trim, which is $51,999. That's what this one is. Gives you pretty well everything. Now, they both qualify for the 5K Fed rebate. They both qualify for provincial incentives that are out there. So you can get uh, in Quebec up to, is it eight and five, something like that, 13,000 or so off of this price, which brings it into very competitive market space, especially with well over a 400 kilometer range in the summertime. And now let me do this. Let me put up my range chart. it for this episode. I want to thank Hyundai Canada again for allowing me to use this vehicle. It's been fantastic and thank you for watching. So, um, I'd, but if you have one, I'd love to hear your comments. If you have any questions, send me an email. My email address coming up in the, in the end credits. Please send me an email. I always like to get emails that answer questions if I can. And until the next episode where I'll have another vehicle to review in a little bit, I want everybody please to stay safe, stay warm. And until the next time, I'll see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.